listen to me, you hillbilly punk who thinks the world's still round. I'm here to tell you it's not. It's flat. <laughs> Interesting guy, man, and uh, you know he believes it. So, Kyrie, the Earth is flat, right? Yeah. 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 So whatever. That's news. That's news. Here we go. <laughs> Wherever you are, make it, make it T T T Truth Frequency Radio. Broadcasting straight to you from a large spaceship, currently anchored over Raleigh, North Carolina, eagerly awaiting the 2017 International Flat Earth Conference coming this fall. Meanwhile, the peanut gallery is in a spaceship anchored over the Midwest breadbasket. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Strange World, where the truth is often stranger than fiction. I'm your host, Mark Sargent, the creator of Flat Earth Clues, which propose that all of us are living inside a Truman Show enclosed structure thousands of miles wide check it out at enclosedworld.com or just google flat earth clues if you can't find it well then you're still feeling the afterglow of the eclipse that is now a week old how fun is that for those of you listening to this on youtube and you want to hear the show live as it happens please go to truth frequency radio for the latest schedule currently this show is on tuesday nights at 7 pacific 10 eastern and if it is not August 29th, 2017 right now, then you're listening to a rerun, which means if you try to call into the show, yeah, you're probably going to get some voicemail, but you're not going to be able to talk to me live. Just to let you know, because that happens all the time. People just listen to reruns and then they just start calling. It's like, I'm going to call them right now. It's like, no, no, don't, don't do it. I know you want to, but don't do it. A uh, quote of the day from the peanut gallery is this. The fact that we live at the bottom of a deep gravity well on the surface of a gas-covered planet going around a nuclear fireball 90 million miles away and think this to be normal is obviously some indication of how skewed our perspective tends to be. That was from Douglas Adams. Really cool. Uh, a few announcements before we get to our guest, because this is going to be a guest show. Actually, it's a double guest show. And if I had a cool sound effect, to be like, guest, guest. But I don't have one. I just thought of that just now. The Flat Earth Conference, which is coming up uh, November 9th. Get on the waiting list. Sign up for live streaming. Press passes. Do not try to ask for more than two if you can, because we're limited on those. Lie, cheat, and steal. Try to get in. If you're still looking for tickets, email me at msargent23 at comcast.net, and I will you know, tell me your sob story. I will try to pass it on. Rumor has it that somebody was going to be selling a ticket tonight, but I, I don't have any information for them yet. If they call in during the show, we're not going to take calls at least until the second hour. I'm, I'm pretty sure between the three of us, we're just going to be yammering like monkeys. So, uh, But if I get any more information on at least one rogue ticket out there that might be sold, because the tickets are transferable, not refundable, but are transferable, I will let you know. Uh, Jeffrey Grupp debate challenge still in effect of a gathering dust. Because nobody wants to go up against physically probably the biggest head in Flat Earth. It's way over a size 8. I, I, I can't imagine. I don't think it's a size 9, but it's really big. And the big money challenge is still in effect. I think it's at 25K. You guys are interested in that. Any academics want to try to make some money, improve the globe, please let me know. Or you can email Kathy Dunson directly. And her email address is 
P-E-R-E-L-A-N-D-R-A 77 at gmail.com. That's Perelandra77 at gmail.com. One of our guests tonight, DITRH, is doing a billboard that's going up near the conference center. The GoFundMe is called A Stranger's Guide to FE Billboard, and I'm sure he'll try to plug this while we're talking to him tonight. It's going to be going up September, October, November. It's going to be a printed billboard, not a digital one like the one I was posing next to in Oregon. We can send people to stand under it with FE signs when we're there for the conference. Next big event before the conference in Raleigh is going to be Rob Skiba and Amber Plaster at TakeOnTheWorld17.com. That's September 15th and 17th in Cleveland, Ohio. If you look at that site and you still don't get enough information from it, you can contact one of the organizers directly. His name's Chris Bailey, and his phone number is 440-668-6373. And I believe that's all the announcements we have for tonight. So let's get to hopefully not any long-winded intros from me when it comes to our guests. One of them uh, you guys know pretty well because he's been on the show several times is DITRH. That's his YouTube channel. And whether or not we're allowed to actually say his name on the show, I'm not sure. <laughs> and the other one is going to be Mike Helmick, if I'm, unless I pronounce that wrong. And we're going to be talking about the eclipse. And we're going to be talking at least during the first segment and the second segment. And if things go well, depending on how, how things go, we'll probably open up the phone lines at the top of the hour. And if you guys want to call in with any eclipse questions, because as you know, the eclipse happened last week. I was in the blackout zone these two guys were breaking it down with some wonderful videos, and I think there's a lot of insightful things that can be gleaned from the eclipse that just happened. So, without further ado, let's do it one by one. D-I-T-R-H, are you there? I'm here, Mark. Good evening. Hey. <laughs> so, I have a question. Did yeah. the eclipse really happen? <laughs> well, it depends who you talk to. Did, did it happen the way mainstream said it happened, or did it happen at all? I was there. I, yeah. I, was there, I was there in the blackout zone. I was at Ground Zero in Salem, Oregon, where supposedly there was going to be a million people. <laughs> and there was, no, there was hardly anybody because everybody got smart, and then they spread out all over the 70-mile-wide uh, swath of blackout. And was so they, there as many people as the media was hyping, or were they trying to scare people away, saying, don't go, you're going to be locked in traffic jams? You know, that's an excellent question. Uh, we, in fact, let, let, let's do this before we get into it too much. Um, Mike, are you there? And you'll have to unmute your microphone. Are you there? Here, Mark. Right hey, here. right on, man. Cool. All right. So, um, to, and to answer your question, uh, what... I think I think a little bit of both because people that anyone that followed social media knew that you should probably avoid Salem, Oregon, because the media said, don't go to Salem, Oregon. Although I got to tell you, and, and you saw some of the pictures I sent you, it was perfect conditions. That part of Oregon was absolutely, I mean, blue sky, no haze in the morning. Uh, the, 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 the forest fires to the east were, were blowing east. We had no, there was no obscurement at all. And, and it was gorgeous. In fact, there was a NASA plane that was flying in, in big circles above us. And uh, that's where the media was. In fact, we were at Riverfront Park. That's where those pictures were taken. And it was, I, it could not, literally could have not have asked for, for finer conditions. And it was gorgeous. It was the closest thing to magic I have ever seen in real life. You know, watching that thing finally hit. And again, for people that, that are out there that, you know, because I know the whole country saw it or didn't see it again. We'll, we'll get into this in a minute. But until you saw those last three percent, you really didn't see anything because that's when the that's when the show really started. Because everything up until that, you just couldn't look at the sun. You had to look through your goggles in the last, you know, 98, 99 and 100 percent. You could take off the goggles, squint a little bit. And then it was just just amazing. Just just gorgeous. So do I think it do I think it happened? I mean, I was there. So some <laughs> so something happened. But do Did I you think, see the moon? No, I didn't. I never. And I was up that night, you know, because we we camped out in we didn't drive down there from Seattle uh, that we, we stayed the night before in a little town called Newburgh, Oregon, which is where uh, George Fox University is. And I was up pretty late 
because the the Airbnb that we we rented for the team uh, had a hot tub. So I'm just sitting out there drinking in the hot tub, and I'm looking up in the sky, and there's no moon. I you know I waited, and, and if it did rise in the morning, I know it's supposed to be a new moon. And you're not going to see it. But at the same time, it's like I never, you know, nobody ever noticed the moon. We had to it, only well, when they, the crowd crowd started reacting. So I'm they, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no problem. They say that uh, you can't see the new moon because the sun is so bright it blots it out, which is, uh, you know, it's an excuse that you, you can't prove one way or the other. But during the 100 percent, you know, the total eclipse, yeah. the, it's not the only 70 mile swath of the Earth is close is dark and the rest is still shining up so the earth shine which has a much higher albedo than the moon and is six times as large should light up the moon so you should be able to see it during the total eclipse eclipse part but you couldn't see it with your naked eye and i'm sure mike is going to explain to us how there was nothing there in his photo analysis and and let me let me intro the mike thing real quick which is again on, from your channel, and and per, forgive me if I because I don't have it. I'm trying to save bandwidth, so I'm trying to keep as, as few windows open as possible. Uh, your your last name is spelled H E L M I C K. Yep, that's right, Mark. Perfect. And the, yeah, I I watched the video, probably the same one that David did, and it really caught my eye because you you used a quote where that I hadn't heard before, and it was very clever. It was a good hook line, which was nothing was was causing the eclipse the eclipse was was literally ha- was being caused by nothing i have gone oh i see what he did there because yeah it, it, in some senses that you're absolutely right there was no three di- what you're saying is there was no it, again correct me if i'm wrong here there was no three-dimensional object that caused the eclipse like mainstream and mainstream science would like to like to say the, the the moon didn't pass in front of the sun it was something completely different something that most of us didn't expect you want to chime in uh, me? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry, Mike. Go, go ahead. To kind of, kind of break down what you thought was was happening when you made that video. What was going on through your uh, through your head? Well, I, I enjoyed listening to you. So, okay, I was a little mesmerized there. No, it's okay. Uh, I, I started uh, I started tracking the clips early that morning. I talked to Ditra, who who we're talking to now. Uh-huh. He uh, he noticed a lot of Kim trailing. I had cameras set up in Georgia. I had, Arizona, where I'm at, here in Illinois, uh, same thing. I didn't even see the sun all day. The, the, the cloud cover was crazy. Also in the UK, Morocco, and uh, Spain also had heavy chemtrailing and, and cloud cover. So, Mark, you were the only one that had the clear view. Of course, NASA was there, so they're not going to cover up their view uh, either, I guess. Um, but I was looking for the Zedic Flat Earth Black Disc, everybody talks about, the, the that see-through, glassy-looking thing to come by and kind of cover up the sun for us. That, that's what I was looking for. Or I was looking for the angles of the moon, uh, simply so I could make a debunking NASA video about how they got the eclipse all wrong. Uh, when the first pictures came in to me, because I had people sending me pictures from the uh, Nikon P900, uh, high-quality stuff, I realized we had an issue because uh, after adjusting the light levels, there there was nothing there blocking the sun. And I realized right then that all my theories, all my ideas of videos were going down the tubes. And uh, really, it, it just kind of floored me. And so I waited for more to confirm. I called uh, someone by the name of Chris Monk. He did an electromagnetic analysis on it through a different type of system machine. He said, Mike, you're right. There's There's nothing freaking there. And uh, so that that's where we're at. And then suddenly when I start posting my photos to Facebook, that's when a lot of other people were coming through and saying, hey, that's what it is. There's nothing there. I couldn't figure this out either because people were doing the same thing I was doing with Facebook and, and checking things out on their own. And so then it just became a, a big, crazy uh, discussion like where where'd the moon go? Yeah. And Mike, did you analyze any of the NASA pictures or were they too low resolution for you? The only NASA picture I analyzed was the one where they happened to photobomb the ISS at the right particular moment. By the way, only one other YouTube channel that I know of caught that. Everybody else did not catch that. There was no ISS up there, and I just debunked that. So, no. Uh, one thing I will say about the NASA photos I did analyze, they were actually eclipse photos. And, yes, the moon was missing in the ones I saw from NASA. 
I was wow. thinking we should we should do a fundraiser and try to raise a hundred dollars so we can get, buy NASA a higher quality camera than what they're using. <laughs> I, I mean, you, but, it's by the ridiculous way, I, the quality almost... of the images they supplied. I had almost forgotten until you guys said that because I was too uh, caught up in the whole uh, you know, that nothing was was causing the eclipse that I forgot about that they had showed you know that tiny little X and called it the ISS that was flying in front of the sun. I was going really, really that's that's what you're going to use. It was in fact who was that NASA that released that that stupid shot? Yes, that was NASA. Um, I debunked it immediately. They pasted the pixel differences between the ISS. They uh, put in in that little square box that we're all familiar with, with their Apollo missions and the Earth hanging in the background, set in a square box. Um, I, I debunked it immediately, and Crow 777 came out. He uh, did a full analysis of the whole thing. He debunked that along with some other things. Got it. Hey, uh, real quick, the um, it, I've, I've got a message outside of this that says that uh, your mic is a little too hot. Can you turn it down by like 20%, 25%? That's Mike, by the way. You okay? What? Okay, sound check. How's that? That's a little better. We'll find it, out. It, the, uh, it, you, were, you, were, you were clipping a little bit. But that's okay. just, Mike, just stay back a little bit. When you talk just at a regular volume and back a little bit, it's not the worst as compared to the worst. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, um, okay. <laughs> My back's against the wall, and I'm way away from the mic. How's that? That's actually, that, that's actually that's fine. That's better. That's yeah, better. That's fine. Not yeah, really you don't have good quality, but... No, no, no. You're going to you're going to be OK. Uh, yeah. You just don't have to lean into it. Your 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 voice is carries plenty fine. There's lots of people out there with real soft voices and I have to crank up the volume. You are not that guy. Okay, so cool. you're, awesome. you're going to be great. The uh, and, and let, let me clarify here, because what we're talking about is that Mike in his video and I, I highly encourage you to go out there and, and check out his stuff. He's saying that whatever was causing the eclipse was not the moon that there was no three-dimensional object that we know as the moon that was passing in front of the sun. For all intents and purposes, it looked like the, the sun was self-eclipsing, that it was shutting down, however it was pulling it off, was shutting down part of its own lighting system, which, from my point of view, doesn't, doesn't really surprise me, because I, I've been saying for a long time now that the moon, because it does its own waxing. It's, if it's self-illuminated, it's doing its own waxing and waning crescents and all that other fun stuff. But to us, we've never thought of the sun that way because the sun has always been the full sun. There's no such thing as a half sun and a quarter sun and all this other crap. It's never, ever happened. Only when finally Eclipse, the first one to, to hit the United States in full in, in 100 years, I'm not counting the ones from the 70s because uh, it, it just wasn't the same, that now we could actually see it. And people with, and the camera technology is so much better than it was 30 years ago and 40 years ago, that now we can take the pictures, immediately grab them. I mean, think of, think of the leaps now that we have made. We can take these fantastic high-res pics, bring them into Photoshop, fire them up into social media, People can just start comparing notes, and all this can be done within hours of, of the event. And what, what Mike's kind of showing here is that if the, the, the moon, everything that we know about the moon and the sun is, is dead wrong. And that the moon, the eclipse, that, that and, and people were asking me while I was doing the, uh, the event down there at the blackout, people were asking me, does this hurt? And, and I know I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but I want to throw this out there. Does this hurt the flat earth? And I go, no, uh, absolutely not. As a matter of fact, the numbers spiked because of the eclipse, because we're claiming it as a flat earth eclipse, not a global eclipse. Agree? Disagree? 100% uh, agree, Mark. And, and the, the, you know, like I told people, this eclipse, it, it we don't know how to put it on any model, uh, whether we're trying to put it on top of a ball or with, or if we're trying to put it on azimuth like with distance or maybe a Pac-Man map or, or maybe something even stranger. We, this, this totally had taken us by surprise. And once, and, and as you know, we live in a strange world. <laughs> nice. I like that. Uh, dit Ra. <laughs> dit Ra is good. Is this Dit Ra? Does Dit Ra work for you, by the way? D-I-T-R-H, Dit Ra. <laughs> What was the other one that people call you? Oh, the, the dys dyslexic, dyslexic people call you dearth. <laughs> yeah. That was back from the, the days of ball earth skeptic. 
Oh, nice. Is yeah. that what they were calling you back in the Baller Skeptic? Was because first? we had Dave Murphy on the show, too. So there was two Daves. So <laughs> whatever. <laughs> nice. What, what do you what do you think? Do you think the 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 eclipse uh, uh, helped us? You know, people us? say the eclipse proves that we live on a spinning ball. And the only reason they say that is because Bill Nye drilled it into the head without any evidence. Um, and there, he actually was talking about the shadow on the moon, which is just a whole nother topic. But when you really try to model it out, uh, the, the eclipse proves that we don't live on a spinning ball with a 93 million mile away sun and a 280, 38,000 mile moon. Uh, none of that makes any sense. You can't model the shadows, the size of the shadows. Uh, the motions are very questionable, but on a flat earth, um, they model perfectly. The motions, the sizes uh, work perfectly with uh, many different um, ways of looking at it. You know, I'm not we're not 100 percent sure how it works, but it models several ways perfectly. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely agree. Oh, yeah. And on a side note, I, I as if Bill Nye's credibility could not get any lower. You saw the, the latest headline from from just this week. And I, as soon as I saw it, I just smiled because it's like, oh, yeah, he's a man of science. All right. But and the money has nothing to do with it. What was now, this headline? Oh my God! Well, you know, ever since he got his new show, you know, the the Bill Nye Saves the World, which I guarantee is not going to be picked up for a second season, the he he's gotten a little 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 more ego, a little more confidence, and he decided to sue Disney for back pay for the Science Guy episodes to the tune of nine million dollars. And I was like, what? <laughs> Are you kidding? I don't know what lawyer he talked to, but That's the lawyer's like, that. It's not a real lawsuit. It's part of his payday for yeah. selling out like he did in that embarrassment of a uh, of a show and the disgrace yeah. Yeah. to air to uh, the children of this world. <laughs> oh, you caught you caught the the episode where that the the sexy song. Oh my god! I know. I felt. I'm I'm thinking as I'm watching that's going. He can't actually know what she's singing, right? All he knows it's like okay, cue singing act, and then you walk off stage. You don't actually know what you're, she's singing, right? I was giving him the benefit of the doubt there. But either way, the fact that he actually decided to go on a show called Bill Nye Saves the World was was beyond ludicrous. But yeah, he's suing him for $9 million. I know it's a fake lawsuit, and, and he'll, he'll, they'll settle out of court. But still, $9 million, that's ridiculous. A um, couple questions about the, because uh, we got uh, like five minutes before our first break snuck up on us. The, um, I wanted to run this by both of you, which was before the eclipse, there were certain aspects of it because people were asking me while they were down there. It's like, why do you think the flat earth can lay claim to the eclipse more than the globalists? And I said, well, okay, the, the first one I would look at would be, I don't know if either of you, I think, I think, uh, uh, Ditra, you, you caught this one was the, uh, the Washington post article, the, the video article where they came out and said, because the question came to the Washington post, dear science, why is the eclipse moving from West to East? And they brought out the best nerds they could find, including uh, you know a guy that was working out at uh, NASA. And you know they went to NASA. I can't remember which which outfit it was. Uh, I can't remember which location uh, off the top of my head. But they asked, and nobody could give it a straight answer. And that drove me insane because at one point he was the, the when they finally got to the NASA guy, he's going, "Well, it's because the moon is moving the, you're twice as fast as the Earth is rotating." And they actually, and I thought, okay, that's a figure of speech. He doesn't actually mean that. Or maybe he means physical velocity versus Earth velocity. But when they showed, the, put the graphic up on screen where the Earth was rotating and the moon was rotating around the Earth, it was, the, the moon was screaming around the Earth. I mean, literally twice as fast as the Earth is spinning. And, and, I, and I had to call him out on it. I had to chop it up and put a graphic on it and say, look, you, the graphic you're putting up on screen is absolutely wrong. The the Earth spins 28 times before the the Moon gets around it, and you're doing it. You're you're going the opposite direction. You're saying the Earth only does half a revolution. So did, did either of you catch that when when we were before the eclipse happened? Yeah, absolutely. They they showed it on a non-spinning Earth, that's on Earth that's spinning to a Moon that's traveling too fast. Yeah. But but I'll argue on the side of the heliocentrists that. If you have a, if you could use a 93 million mile away sun with a 238,000 mile away moon, and it could cast a shadow, a defined smaller shadow on the Earth, that um, and the motions are the way they say they are, it could uh, make a shadow go from west to east. Um, but simpler, a 
a flat earth with a sun out running the moon by 50 minutes a day um, as it overtakes the moon will make the shadow go in the opposite direction. I mean, if you just hold your fist out and get a flashlight and bring it with the one hand over your fist, you'll see that the shadow starts and then crosses back on the opposite way that the light is going. So that can happen. It's convoluted in the heliocentric model. On the flat earth model, it makes perfect sense. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with it, Ron, that I, I modeled the whole thing to scale. First of all, the sun being 93 million miles away cannot cast a shadow on earth. This is why NASA came out and said, hey, we got to make the sun bigger. Why? Because they need more surface area for what they call photons nobody's ever seen. Uh, simply because uh, the sun, from our perspective, at 93 million miles away, is actually a little tiny golf ball sized thing in the sky. And so for it, 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 at that perspective, that's where the light photons are going to come from. And they would simply be too spread out because you need the photons to leave a shadow because the shadow's absence of photons having no mass in itself. Uh, but for the west east shadow, the moon only has to move, it has a two degree space to move across the Earth. And it's just like uh, Ditra explained, it's just a, a light, just the way the light moves at that speed. It's kind of like standing on Earth and taking a laser, pointing at the moon and moving across the moon. You just cover a few thousand miles in, in just a matter of half a second. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of like how what they're explaining the uh, Westie shadow, how it works. Now, I heard NASA's explanation answer the question, and he just totally screwed it up. He, he doesn't even know his own model. Uh, because he was using the moon velocity. It's really not the moon velocity. It's just size, distance, and the distance that it has to make the shadow and the way light works. Yeah. And But the thing was that bothered me, and we're going to break here, just so you guys know, in about a minute. And when we do, then you got three minutes to do whatever you want. We'll come back. But But what got me, to your point, Mike, was that they committed to it. This wasn't like a live interview where, where they did, you know, where, where they were rushed for time. They actually built the graphic out to to explain his point you know I, again i where the the moon is just screaming around it i'm going how how are you getting away with this how are you getting away with this and of course the graphic which you probably already saw yeah the sun was you know of course wasn't anything to scale but the sun w and was was really big close to the moon that way they could get away with showing the focused you know the, the focused shadow we'll talk about that a little bit when we come back from the break because i i've got a couple questions about the 70 mile shadow we'll come back with Mike Helmick and Ditra. Stay tuned. Three minutes. You're listening to the True Frequency Radio Network. No hate, no hype, no, 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 no fear. Welcome back to Strange World, where the truth is often stranger in fiction. Tonight we're talking about the eclipse. We've got Mike Helmick and Dit Ra, otherwise known as D-I-T-R-H, otherwise known as Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole. And for the people that are on hold right now, we're not going to take calls during this segment, just so you know, but you can feel free to listen in. Or if you want to listen in only, you can call us 641-793-7117. But we will try to take calls at the top of the hour just to see if you have the clips questions. So where we left off was this, and I want to run this by both of you, because I thought that was very curious. The thing that I noticed out of all the pre-eclipse stuff going in was the blackout path, which was extremely narrow. And to the point where, because I remember I was asked, it's like, well, why, why would you think it's a flat Earth eclipse and not a global eclipse? And I'm going, okay, aside from all the other crap we've talked about, and I do want to get into what the uh, average person, uh, and I'll use Mike for this, how the average person can actually grab a, a Photoshop image or, you know, an image and pull it into Photoshop and, and crank up the levels and, and see what you're seeing. But before that, I want to talk about the, the, the blackout path, which is 
that the blackout path is only 70 miles wide. Show me where in real life, remember, because the average person is going to you know, go for the path of least resistance here, where you can take an object like the moon, which is 2,100 miles wide, give or take, and shrink the shadow down to 70 miles. That's a 97% decrease in, in relative size. We've all seen, you know, we all know shadows every day, you know, we've all walked in, in bright sunlight and fading sunlight. We've seen planes fly over the sky and they leave full size patterns below. We've all flown in planes to where you can, if you're lucky on a good clear day, you can actually see the shadow of your plane on the ground as it's, you know, leaving or coming in for a landing. You can see this. So the question to either one of you is, can you think of a circumstance or a light condition that I just don't know about yet where you can get that sort of reduction in shadow size? Anybody? Well, I uh, modeled the shadow, Mark. Um, in, 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 for all you listeners out there, if you go download the Epic Discover type, Google Epic Discover Eclipse, NASA also modeled it. That that Earth you're looking at there, that's actually a 3D model. It's not a picture from space. In fact, we contacted Rob Simmons. He told us there's no strip data and gave us the FTP servers to Russia, China, and the U.S. And so if you see their shadow on their Epic Discover, or the same with Japan's MRI-8, it's a small, black, ugly, incomplete shadow. And the reason why it's incomplete and ugly is because it's a non-shadow. It's a foreshadow in a 3D modeling program. In other words, it's an unnatural shadow that we would not experience in real life. When I modeled it, I could I had to cheat at 93 million miles just to get that that same type of shadow NASA and uh, Japan produce. And so modeling software, that's kind of what it looks like simply because the light is not there from that distance. Now, what NASA showed is this wide sweeping secondary shadow, and I don't know if this is the penumbra or umbra, I forget which one, but sweeping shadow that covered all the way up uh, uh, Canada, Alaska, and did a sweep over. That would be absolutely impossible on, uh, on a heliocentric model. So, nice. Mike, if I hear you correctly, basically what you just said is the images are fake. Uh, yeah, yeah, more or less. They, they, they're put together by a uh, computer, by it all. They take radar uh, data and set it up there, but I don't want to get into all that. Yeah, they're all fake. The Titan, the MRA, and the Epic Discover are. I, I was just helping out our... the just helping out the people that might have gotten lost on that. Oh no, they're no, I, I I knew where he was going as well. You're, you're saying that the basically that the shadows we were seeing were were mathematical modeling. And that's right. why you that's why they they show up the way they do. It's it's our interpretation, it's the software's interpretation of what it's trying to describe as a shadow. Right. And the software is trying because uh, evidently NASA uh, set this light source way back in distance because that's the kind of unnatural uh, light shadow a modeling software will make because the software engine doesn't know uh, how to interpret light at that distance. And that's what they showed an incomplete shadow if you examine the uh, epic discover. Uh, uh, eclipse of the Earth, for example, you'll see that it's not a complete shadow and there's color data inside the shadow that's bright. So the modeling software can't really do its job at that distance. And I encountered the same thing when I modeled it. And so did uh, Chris Monk from the Sun and Moon Group. He modeled the same thing. We contacted each other and he said, you know what, Mike, if we made a natural light the size of the sun, uh, it won't leave any shadow. And so and that's true. We I made a natural light the size of the sun. And if you can crank it up, cranking it up really doesn't matter. It's the surface area of the sun shooting the light photons, which totally bypass the moon and Earth. The sun at that distance can leave no shadow. Wow. That's that's amazing. And in, in, what, is it also true, you know, because I've, I've tried to watch as many of the Eclipse videos as I could. I mirrored one in particular, and I can't remember what the guy's name was. Uh, where he was saying, isn't it convenient that all, you know, for the rest of the models that NASA uses in mainstream science, all the rays from the sun, and I'm sure you have a different word for it, come in at, you know, at a straight line and, you know, creates normal, normal sized shadows. But for this, conveniently enough, when they hit the moon, and I love the graphics because everyone just believes the graphics that they see. All of a sudden you get that cone shaped uh, the the shadow that gets produced by by the moon. It's like, oh yeah, that's how it gets shrunk down. I'm going, come on. 
we would have seen something like this. And let's, unless you guys can tell me I'm wrong here, has have either of you seen anything even remotely close to this in the natural world, the world that we live in now, with natural light source, artificial light source, where it creates a weird effect, where all of a sudden the object behind, you know, let's say it's a car headlight, way, way, way down in the distance, and but it's on high beams, and there's a small object, and then that small object in front, the the shadow just turns into just a dot. Has anyone even seen something remotely like that? Anyone? I no. think I maybe, saw something maybe like in that Cinderella. on the space station. <laughs> maybe in Cinderella. <laughs> I think they show that on the space station, too. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah. It it was absolutely... When I saw that... And, oh, I'm sorry. I, let, me, let me get back to this. The, the reason why that caught my eye was... I said, look, you, you want the, the easiest explanation for, from our standpoint? It's like, look, we only think... You know, I, I'm not going to quote you guys necessarily, but I think that the, the sun and the moon are only 30 to 50 miles wide to begin with. So casting a 70 mile wide blackout shadow, that works pretty good. <laughs> I'd say that's, a, that's pretty accurate from, from what we're, where we're standing. Works a heck of a lot better than saying that it's a 2100 mile object that just happens to be 400 times closer than an object that's 93 million miles away and they fit perfectly in front of each other. Let me, let me tell you this. When, when I was there in the blackout zone, when it hit, I had no... Now, granted, I'm looking at it with a complete bias now. But when I was looking at it, I was I, first thing that came to my mind was like, it's just a light show. That's all I'm looking at here. This isn't some giant, magnificent, celestial event. It's just a light show. That's all it is. In fact, I, I dare say that if our planetariums were better at what they're doing now, you know, because right now the planetariums are limited to the light sources. They can do the moon, they can do comets, they can do the stars and stuff like that. And of course, laser Floyd and laser Zeppelin on weekends, but they can't do the sun. It's just too bright. Now, if they if they updated it to modern technology and use like OLED monitors, they could probably put a pretty bright light source up there if they wanted to and simulate an eclipse. But up until now, they haven't been able to. So when I was looking at this, I was going, this is one of the few things that they can't do realistically inside a planetarium. And, and that kind of that kind of struck me. But anyway, aside from that, I wanna, I, I've got a couple more questions. And the, the first one's going to be for uh, uh, Mike, which is, OK, Mike, if, if the average person out there who's still maybe not getting this, because I know it's a radio show and we're trying to describe something that's very, very visual. If you want to, if the average person on the street, let's say it's me, right, wanted to see, kind of, kind of discover what you were, you were seeing, what would be the easiest way to just go online, look up eclipse photos? Is there a place to download decent eclipse photos? And then what, pull it into what software and look for what? What would you do if you had like a relative? I'm your cousin. Say, I want to see this thing. What will I have to do? What would you tell well, me? Well, go grab yourself a clips picture. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure it's fancy. But uh, what I did was I, I took the clips pictures. And in Photoshop, you can use the adjustments, uh, level, the levels adjustment layer. Or mm -hmm. you can use HDRI toning. Or you can do like what Rob Skiba likes to do and, and set the, uh, the, the brightness levels or whatever, the uh, gamma or whatever. But what I was looking for is... The uh, the the I was looking at the sun. I wasn't looking at the moon. I was looking at the sun, mm -hmm. and I wanted to see where the light paths of the sun were going. Because if there's an object in front of another object, it will block that object's light source, and that's what I was looking at. So when I went to look for the moon and to see where the light of the sun was going, the sun acted as if there was nothing in front of it. You could see the sunlight in its radial pattern unhindered, unblocked by any rock that's supposedly hovering above us in space. So there should have been a black... So if there was a three-dimensional object in front of it, you would have seen a very clear, concise zone where the light just was not going through no matter what. And that, right. was, not the, and that was not the case. Right. Or, I mean, or it, even... Or even a, a fl something flat, anything in front of it. Even if there was a flat, opaque uh, disc or whatever in front of it, that would, uh, that's what Mike's saying, there was nothing in front of it. It doesn't even have to be 3D, right, Mike? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, like car lights, if you, if you stand in front of one of the headlights, then you only see one of the other headlights because somebody's standing in front of the other one. I mean, 
something was blocking, not, nothing was blocking the light path of the sun. What was really interesting, though, as the eclipse was occurring and the sun started to look like uh, Miss Pac-Man, the light path followed the shape of the sun, but there was no object blocking the light path. Best I can describe it. Wow. Wow. So your your description in the beginning was true. So if you had to, and, and people can see this. This is not this is not hard. It, I think where where people were having some trouble was they were trying because again, if you don't play in Photoshop or if you don't play with light sources and and tweak the levels of any photographs, you're not you're probably not going to understand what we're talking about here. But what what Mike's basically saying is that something. Uh, Something other than the moon was shutting down the light from the sun. And from what you were just saying, uh, uh, Ditra, was that that it wasn't even a two dimensional object that was even though you even though you did that that cool little thing where you used that what the um, uh, the the paper towel tube and the flashlight and the what was what was that lid from? I thought it was like a Snapple cap. <laughs> it was it was about the size of a Snapple cap. It was another yeah. little jar cap. That's all. But I, should, I, you, I was thinking I should have used like a golf ball or something, but I didn't have one. Oh yeah, golf it, ball would have been good too. It, it would have done. It would have done the same thing though. Yeah, yeah. And so what you did was you you shone the light through the the cardboard tube, on and then put the the lid in front of it to, to simulate the the eclipse. And it's actually very effective, considering the whole thing cost probably fifty cents, if that. It cost nothing. <laughs> it was trash, basically. It was, it was trash. <laughs> um, and you, but Go ahead. but the the idea that we can't see you know with a telescope a P nine hundred you know expo long exposures no one has ever seen the moon approach or exit the face of the sun uh, before and after an eclipse and right. you know this time was a time in, when technology has really stepped up where everyone has a camera we have super zoom cameras we have all sorts of stuff and it was probably one of the most photographed eclipses ever. Um, and again, nothing was seen. And then people like Mike and uh, and Chris from the Sun and Moon uh, group um, analyzed these pictures in programs like Photoshop, adjusting the levels, showing that there's nothing, uh, nothing there blocking the light. So my idea came that, you know, I look at the sun and it sure looks like it's it's coming from it's actually not a physical thing and it's being projected for lack of a better word into our world and uh, i got this idea a long time ago by listening to professor eric dollard in that oh, famous scene him. where he's sitting in the car and he's saying the sun is a transformer in in a fourth dimension um and it is it is uh leaving a three-dimensional slice in our reality right. and so i said all right let me try this i get a, a bright flashlight and a semi-transparent um piece of paper had a paper towel and I, I recreated the eclipse. And if you look at it, you know, if I had done that with a uh, blue, you know, a light blue sh sky looking sheet, I probably could have passed it off for the sun and the eclipse if I if the light was bright enough to wash out the blue. Um, and that's kind of what we see. And, and now if you look at the sun most days, you know, especially if there's a little bit of, uh, you know, I'll say clouds in the sky, but everybody knows what I'm talking about. You yeah. can look at it. It looks like it's being beamed in there. It is It is like a, a magnifying glass focuses a point of light onto the earth. But imagine if you can focus that point of light into a spot in the air. Oh, okay. I, I never thought of that. Yeah, you're right. When you, and, when you use a magnifying glass, that beam that's on the ground is extremely bright. And then my second video... Um, where the, some guy in Michigan showed um, what appears to be another eclipsing planet or sun right next to the sun. And, you know, we can rule it out as a lens flare because as you move the camera around, it doesn't move. It's locked in position to the sun. And, you know, Crow777, uh, who uh, I trust his opinion, um, he's saying that cannot be a lens flare because of the way it's locked and doesn't know what it is. And then I did a little research and I found that there's been hundreds, you know, thousands of pictures like that, but not during an eclipse. And the body next to the sun that was locked there was a full circle. So then I'm thinking, OK, it's a circle during the eclipse and uh, and it follows the eclipse. Maybe it has to do with what we're seeing. And then I thought about it. 
if you projected a movie onto a hanging sheet and you're watching the sheet from the far side, so it's a rear projection screen, if you if you look to the side, you know, where let's say the movie's only filling up, you know, two thirds of the sheet, you can look through the sheet and actually see the projecting lens, which is smaller, but it has the whole image in there. Right. And so, so then I did the same thing, but I went from a toilet paper sky to, no, from a paper towel sky to a toilet paper sky, uh, which was, which I, uh, which was the only thinner piece of paper I had in the house. And, I recreated the exact same thing when I was making the eclipse. You had the eclipse in the sky on the toilet paper. And then if you look through it, you can see the smaller one, which was the projector. So that is just something that I'm not saying that's what's happening, but it's observable, testable, and repeatable. And I really can't find anything else that can explain it any better. If anybody wants to see it and doesn't know where my channel, D-I-T-R-H is the YouTube channel. And there's two uh, videos on there, and the, within the first ten videos, you'll find it. Nice. Yeah, good point. The um, the you mentioned Eric Dollard, and that was one when I was first starting to get into the whole flat Earth thing. I was you know delving around in different different little corners, and the, it, if anybody knows the the video, the one video of course that that gave me chills was you know that one where you're sitting in the car, and it was something about it wasn't just conviction. It was it's obvious what what's happening up there you know he he saw it he's like he's no it's a transformer it the 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 light's coming in from some other dimension he goes there's no fusion on the sun it's well known you know it it, it, it the way he was going he was breaking it down yeah of course he didn't have all the answers but it was fascinating what you know, the the path he was going down and when i was it's like okay then what is the sun exactly and i i didn't really focus on it too much because i was i was working on other things but now I'm going to be revisiting it because, yeah, he's he's an interesting. He's still alive, as far as I know. Yeah, he's wrong on some other things. You know, he still is speaking from a heliocentric point of view, right? Right. Uh, right. But he got he got you know the stuff that he was challenging. Uh, he's right to challenge it, and then other stuff. Uh, you know, I think he mentions planets in there. It's yeah. just stuff that he hasn't looked into, and I'm sure um, probably by now he has and realizes <laughs> realizes. Yeah, you know, that it's all lies. Well, yeah. If you can, if you can make the the sun, all, you know, if you can get your head around it and realize that it's much, 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 you know, ninety nine point nine 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 percent smaller than what they say it is. You know, instead of hundreds of thousands of miles wide, it's only fifty miles wide. Then that, you know, you you have a chance, especially with that guy's brain, you have a chance of 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 figuring out the the subtle nuances of it. And uh, so I encourage anyone, if you want to look up some some really interesting stuff, look up Eric Dollar, D-O-L-L-A-R-D, where, where, of course, you know, it looks like he's just talking, you know, somebody's interviewing him from a car. You know, it's like, oh, they found him, you know, you know, pulled off to the side of the road. No, I thought he was actually, that was like one of his lounge chairs was, was that car. Yeah, the uh, uh, Eric Dollar, and I haven't checked him out, and I'm kind of curious or uh, interested that you guys said that, uh, what he said about the sun being mm-hmm. in some fourth dimension. You know, uh, we've been tracking the sun and come to the same conclusion: the sun's not actually in our spatial space. In other words, you and I couldn't take a rocket ship and go visit it. No, I did. Uh, they, I had some uh, pictures of clouds where the or the top of the clouds where the sun's hitting the clouds and leaving shadows. Well, those shadows leave angles, of course. And so I was curious, how far away would you have to leave a, uh, move a light source to make those angle of shadows? And so I modeled it all to scale. It's one mile. Uh, because the farther you go, these shadows start going, of course, into 90 degree angles. And so it was one mile that those shadows matched that light source supposedly from the sun. Now, the sun did look like it was right up in the sky, but it looked like it was way farther than a mile. But whatever that light source was that's being projected in was no further than a mile. And so, so we've, know, we've known this now for a while. So, Mike, you, you're, you're talking about the shot from an airplane that was probably five miles up. And you could see the clouds and the, and the shadows on the ground. And you did the angling from there, correct? Right. I didn't want to do like the rays through the clouds because we so, run into problems with refractions and stuff. Yeah, I did so, that. From- so I, I'm, uh, I'm under the belief, and so are some other people, um, through observations, that 
the sun position, the sun's position where we see it is relative to where we are. So if the sun, let's say the sun was three miles in the air and you went up in an airplane three miles at noon, well, the sun is now going to be six miles up in the air from, from the ground point of view, three miles over the plane. As you move, the sun moves. If you look at crepuscular rays when they're coming through clouds and look at them, that sun is you know, right above the clouds. Maybe it's twice the height of the clouds. But then again, you send a, 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 a weather balloon up 100, 120,000 feet, and the sun is way above the weather balloon. Um, yeah, that, that's correct, David. So, the, so, both the sun and moon are... Uh, yeah, from, so rel yeah. relative to the position, so the that sun that's above the balloon, there's no way it can make those crepuscular rays that we see from the ground. So my, my point is, when you're, when you're looking and trying to triangulate the position of the sun from a third position, it's okay, but it's really not going to get you the true an answer because you're getting, you said you triangulated it at a mile. Well, you know what? That might be um, where it is from somebody standing where that shadow is on the ground, but from your position, it sure looked a lot higher, and it was a lot higher. But that, but that wasn't the higher position that was creating those clouds. Does that make sense? Makes hundred percent sense. Cr creating those shadows. Makes absolute sense, David. In fact, what we have found is that both the moon and the sun are only uh, wherever you're standing on Earth. And we're working on a theory like this because Earth has a very strong positive and negative field. NASA, this is what NASA has been tracking for a long time. But I, I believe wherever you're standing at, you're going to see a different perspective of the sun and the moon as than somebody maybe standing a block away or a mile away. They're going to see something totally different. And one idea we have is wherever we're standing at or whatever the observer is at in Earth's magnetic field, it orientates the sun to their perspective view. That's one idea we have because with magnetics, it can work that way. Interesting. David, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. <laughs> you know, every day my mind is blown with this stuff. And the more you look into it, the more you find out, and the more you find out that you don't know. But the one thing you realize more every day is that the heliocentric model and every single thing about it is such utter nonsense that it's bewildering that you ever believed it in the past once you see through it's nonsense. Well, at the same time, don't be so hard on yourself. I, I, <laughs> I, I was, it's like, yeah, of course, everybody fell for it, but it wasn't what, I, what I've been trying to tell people recently is like, look, you didn't, it wasn't that you fell for it. You didn't have a chance. It was that this particular myth has been put out there for so many generations. It was your father and his father and his father's father going back literally at minimum, minimum 500 years. You know, it could have been going back further, depending on who you talk to. But if you go back minimum 500 years, you were born into it. And the line, which I'm still going to steal every time I, every chance I get, which is we believe that the, the world that is presented to us. No, I, especially since we're children. As children, we do not believe in lies. And so the, the movie The Village, M. Night Shyamalan, where they just took a whole bunch of kids and put them in the woods and built a town and said, yeah, yeah by the way, you live in the mid-1800s. Why wouldn't they believe they're in the 1800s? Why their parents shouldn't lie to them? They, if, you, if they're taught that most people don't lie, you're going to believe whatever is, whatever is told you. If you're told that the globe is it, and your father's told it was a globe, and his father, all going all the way back to, you know, before the globe factories, that's how it was going to work. That's, that's how it was going to pan out. So we got about uh, 45 seconds to the break. Are you guys up for uh, taking, taking a few calls when we come back from the break? I'm, yeah, I'm I okay it. with it. Okay. I love I'm taking just, calls. Cool. We're just going to field whatever. They're, if there's any trolls, I'll shoot them down from here. But All right. Uh, chance, chances are we're not going to. I love so, tough, tough questions. Anybody that has a tough question, but ask it as a question. Don't call us idiots. Ask your, <laughs> your, your proof of the globe as a question. And during the break, uh, feel free to subscribe to the, the flat earth podcast.com. Nice. Nice. And, and, and while you're at it, look at Mike Helmick's channel on YouTube, which is his name, Mike Helmick. And the first call we're going to pick up when we come back, unless he hangs off is going to be the Tacoma, Washington. I think it's two, five, three. 253 area code. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Three minutes. We'll be back.
Online. This is the Truth Frequency Radio Network. We are TFR. Truth Frequency Radio. Welcome back to Strange World, part three of four. We are going to take callers because we have special guests. And if you want to direct the questions to them, you can. If you want them, direct them to me. That's fine, too. Number to call in is 720-897-6111 or the backup number, which is 213-233-3998. And we get a little bit of a buffet of calls that are coming in right now. Well, a little, little trivia for you guys real quick. That song, which was playing audio clips from Dr. Strangelove, Peter Sellers was actually slated to be Major Kong, but he got injured, and so he didn't. He had to play different roles. He played three roles in that movie. Trivia question. I'm not going to give it away for you guys. Anyway, so uh, Mike and Ditra, you guys ready? Fire away. <laughs> ready, ready to <laughs> they're go. Gonna, they're going to be fine. I don't. I literally. I can't remember the last time I got a troll call. So that, let's... That, that's all right. I know how to do it, trolls. I got plenty of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Trolls on the phone aren't as bad. You know, in comments, they can just say things and not answer things. But, you know, uh, uh, trolls ask the best questions sometimes. Right. Good point. And before I pick up this first call, the first call is going to be from Tacoma, Washington. And then I think I'm going to pick up North Carolina. First uh, quick quote from the peanut gallery, because I haven't mentioned him much this evening. Uh, the quote goes something like this. See now the power of truth. The same experiment, which at first glance seemed to show one thing when more carefully examined, assures us of the contrary. And who said that? Galileo Galilei. All right, we're going to pick up Tacoma, Washington. Here we go. Tacoma, Washington, you're on with Strange World live right now. What's going on? Good evening, Mr. Mark Sargent. This is Daryl D. Marble. Holy Jim, smokes, it's, it's, it's D. Marble. Daryl, Daryl. <laughs> hey, Daryl. Hey, I, I hey, hope hey, it's still Hey, it's Mike. That's <laughs> not <laughs> it's the best hey, looking man in flat yeah. earth. I yeah, totally, it is. <laughs> I, I know. To, Mark, to, come on. Cut that out. <laughs> seriously, I'm going to get a yeah. sound effect for when you call in. You, you, the opening of uh, when Andre 3000 sings uh, Hey Ya, when the, when the crowd is screaming. That's the sound effect I'm going to use. Mark, I'm gonna I, find... was gonna, I was going to oh. comment when you were on the oh. Sun Moon group that you have beautiful eyes, but I didn't want it to come off wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that comes off wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, it's the, uh, all right. I, I thank thank you for that. Yeah. Anyway, what's what's going on, D Marvel? What uh, what's happening? Oh, oh, oh! Well, I didn't have any anything too serious. Just wanted to drop in, say hi to everyone. Uh, Mike, I, I appreciate you. Uh, what you've been doing lately, man? Um, just listening to the show, you guys got some pretty uh, interesting concepts here about the sun being a projection and all, man. I hadn't even gotten into that part yet gosh but um mark the main thing i was calling for just yeah. got word drum roll right. please da, 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 have da, another da, da, meetup. the oh i'm sorry you're gonna do another meetup yeah we're gonna be in burian next thursday burian next thursday okay uh send me yeah. the email on that so go ahead tell me where it's gonna be for, just for the listeners all right, we are going to be at the point in Burien. Uh, address is 435 Southwest 152nd Street, Burien, Washington, 98166. Right on. Uh, we'll be, uh, we have the venue for uh, from 7 to 11. 
seven to close. And, uh, you know, it's about room for about 70 people or so. Uh, we already have food uh, being, you know, it's on, on order. We have drink tickets. Uh, it's been set up by uh, my buddy Tyson Bushnell. And, yeah, uh, so we got everything locked in. Plenty of time to get the word out on this one. Next, so it's a week from, so it's, it's this, it's not in two days, it's a week from Thursday. That'll be September 7th, sir. September 7th. That'll work out actually pretty good, because I, there's a shot, I've got my tickets booked to go down to Houston, provided it doesn't actually slip into the sea on September 10th. So that'd be perfect. Yeah, yeah, count on me. I will, I will be there, man. Awesome. Right Fantastic. Cool. Fantastic. Oh, oh, and, 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 send, uh, and, and send me all the information on it, and I will do a trailer for you uh, in the next day or so. Just give me the basic info. I've already got the template made up, and I'll, I'll do that for you. But that sounds great. Sounds like a hey, good time. Hey, okay. Daryl. Daryl. Well, well, yes, sir. You need to go to my channel and watch Why Don't We See the Moon During the Solar Eclipse and Our Projected Sun Over a Flat Earth. I'm on it. I'm okay. on that right now. And when All you're right. done with this channel, Daryl, head to mine. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I, I'm on it. I'm probably going to spend the rest of the evening checking you guys out because uh, you guys both do great work, man. So, uh, yeah, that, that's all I got. Just wanted to, you know, put that out there. Got going to have a meet up, get with some good people. Gentlemen, please continue the show. Lots of interesting information here. I'll continue listening. Mark, I just, just now got the uh, number for... You know, to to call in and listen, because I, I only had the number uh, in my phone to call in and talk. And oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Really my thing. Yeah, if you want, yeah, if you want to call, you know, that was it. I knew, I kind of knew that too, because it was going to call my. I wonder if that's Daryl. I go, I bet you just calling in and listening. <laughs> so, the, if you guys want to call in and just right, listen, right. the phone number is six four one seven nine three seven one one seven, and then I won't pick you up and put you on the spot and say, "All right, why are you calling? What sort of question? Do I care?" So. And, right, and, and so by the way, everybody got, check, out, no... check out D Marble's channel, D Space Marble, uh, growing very, very quickly and definitely the best ma looking man in fl uh, Flat Earth and, and makes me l literally look like Shrek from uh, Disney. So, yeah, that's that's awesome. a huge honor coming from the father of Flat Earth, and uh, I'll take that as a huge compliment, sir. Hey, you know what? Gandalf doesn't get a lot of chicks. I'm pretty sure of it. <laughs> Oh, please. But ladies love magic, man. <laughs> good point. I, I, you know what? I'll take that. I'll take that. All right, man. Hey, you have a, you have a good rest of your night, and uh, uh, hopefully the call, the listen line will work for you. Excellent. I, I'll hop back on that. You guys have a good night. Thank All you, right. gentlemen. All right. Stay, Stay flat. flat. Stay flat. Bye. Bye. All right. Hopefully he'll remember to send me all the info for the meetup. That's the second Seattle meetup that's going to be in Burien uh, next Thursday. So a week from Thursday, not this, not in two days. It'll be a week from Thursday. So I, I will definitely go to that. All right. Let's pick up uh, North Carolina, Greensboro. Uh, if I if the screen will stop moving around, and then I'll try to pick up New York, and then I'll go up to maybe Florida. After that, so let's go North Carolina. North Carolina, you're on with Strange World with Ditra and Mike Helmick. Talking about the eclipse, what's going on? Hi, guys. Uh, great, greetings from Greensboro, North Carolina. How are you guys doing tonight? Good. I've got a uh, question for Mike. All ears, North Carolina. Hey, buddy. Um, I <clears throat> ate that video of yours. Yours and Ditra's, those videos, uh, the recent videos on the eclipse are uh, excellent stuff, but I, I do have a uh, a trolling kind of question for you. Uh, it, it's not too serious, but uh, I'm just wondering uh, how, if you have modeled that uh, situation where you've got the uh, the, the pattern of light. Um, have you modeled that where you've occulted a light with uh, an object, and have you know have you modeled how how the light uh, pattern, I guess. Uh, um, you can't see it uh, changing if you've occulted it with something physical. Uh, are you talking the supposed Westy shadow? Or are you just talking about the eclipse in, in general? What we did see. The the eclipse itself, where where um, the the alleged moon 
occulting object uh, does not interfere with the light pattern from the sun. Um, have you taken a light source on your own and modeled where you've uh, uh, occulted it with, with something and have also seen uh, in Photoshop where the light pattern doesn't change? Well, in modeling software, you, you can't really reproduce the atmospheric effects. In fact, uh, to produce a lens flare, uh, we have to post add even that. And so we're losing a lot of light uh, dynamics that we see in real life. What, what I can tell you is that the moon was uh, totally invisible to us those, those days anyways on Earth because nobody sees the moons those days. And what people have believed is, well, it's invisible anyways. But my thing to them is that just because the, you can't see the moon doesn't change the fact that the heliocentric team tells us that the moon is an orbiting rock above us wobbling around Earth. And so a, or a, a rock is going to block the light path of the sun regardless. So it uh, doesn't matter how transparent an object is, if it is a solid, it will block the uh, path of the light that it's in front of. And so I, I got a lot of that on my channel where people saying, well, the moon's invisible anyways. You wouldn't see the moon. Well, that's kind of akin to saying like... Uh, my, my bed, I can't see my bed if I shut out my bedroom light, but the bed's still going to block light. The bed doesn't change its physical properties. So I, I hope that yep. answered your question. Well, not exactly. Um, I'm, I'm just curious. You weren't curious enough to, let, let's say, turn on a light in your house and, and move something in front of it and take that photograph and then put that photograph into Photoshop and, and analyze how the, the light patterns work. Uh, well, the, you, you can't, you can't, first of all, you, we're talking about a lot of great distances. And when people start setting up paper cups and, and, and their basketballs and their golf balls and, and they try to do things, you know, to get a perspective of something, it's really not as good as modeling it to scale because you're going to miss something. And the bottom line, it's just a simple principle. Nothing blocked the light path of the sun. It's just real simple. It's not that hard to understand. The sun uh, acted as if nothing was in front of its rays. And I, I, I can't model that. I would, Dit Ra, he actually modeled that. Uh, if you want to model it, then he, go watch his video because he actually did it through a, through a cloth and a projection type thing. But if you're talking about a physical object like the heliocentric assumes the moon is, no, it, I can't, you can't model that. It can't be done. If something's blocking the light of something else, it'll block the light. Well, okay, and I'm not articulating my question well enough for you, and I don't want to take up too much time. I, I, I appreciate your time, and, and uh, it, you know, nothing surprises me anymore when it comes to this stuff. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me at all if it was just a light show, um, because I, I'll tell you, you know, no matter which photographs or, or, or video footage I've seen online, every, every different person's perspective of the eclipse is different. And what I keep noticing in the center of the sun, I, I notice that the eclipse kind of starts at the center of the sun. There's, a, there's, there's a, a blackening right in the center that happens. And it's got, to me, has nothing to do with the moon eclipsing the sun when this is happening. What do you mean that it starts in the center of the sun? I can see it. I can see uh, a black dots right in the very center of the sun when uh when the eclipses when when totality is allegedly happening i think that that's more or less it um i i think that the the blackening or the occulting of the sun actually begins in the center um and i've seen that so many times and and i come away from that thinking why did we ever think that this had anything to do with the moon you know um Interesting. In, 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 in that we've never seen the moon, um, clearly, gotcha. uh, leaves a lot of questions. To be well, what you're explaining could be actually reproducing a dielectric magnetic field. Uh, and I sent uh, Mark here a picture of a magnetic field in the sun. I don't know if we're going to have time to get into that. But that darkening that you see that, that kind of starts in the center, like that's the shadowing, and other people notice it too can be caused by a positive and negative starting to cancel each other out, much like rubbing a ferrocell over the top of a, a powerful magnet. 
Well, it, it kind of sounds like you're talking science here, which is different and refreshing when it comes to this stuff, huh? <laughs> Well, we we would start off science, but my gosh, we got to show videos of this stuff and give a, a visual just to, so people can kind of grasp their head around it because electromagnetics yeah. and uh, electro universe are, are fascinating studies. And I encourage everyone, you know, uh, what, we're talking about dollar, go, go in and start researching this stuff because it'll start to explain a lot of things. Yeah. Hey, um, exactly. caller, I mean, uh, hey, I've, I've been a... go ahead. Hate, hate to do this to you, but we we got we got a whole bunch of calls backing up. Tell you what, if you if you have any more uh, questions, email Mike directly. I'm sure his email is easy to find on his uh, YouTube page, and uh, we'll we'll catch you another time. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Mark. Good night. Bye. Night. See ya. Okay, we're gonna bounce right into Naples, Florida, because he's been waiting a long time. Naples, Florida. Hopefully, it's Naples, Florida. You never know what calls. Oh boy, he's. Might be calling from the road. Can you hear me? Hey, what's up? It is Maple Florida. How are you guys doing? What, uh, what's going on? Make sure you, you talk loudly into your phone. Okay, uh, ain't nothing much. Um, okay, so <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna go in the complete opposite direction of the last caller. I okay. actually do believe that that is the moon uh, eclipsing the sun. Do you? Uh, during the solar eclipse? Yes, what? I do. Yeah, how, I am how a flat, so? flat Earth. Um, well, all right. It's going to sound weird. <laughs> That's okay. But, um, Given what the show's about, I, I'm not going to judge. Right. Um, okay, so I, I, that darkness we see at night or the blue sky, I, I think that's like a sea of something. And um, uh, I, it's kind of like the moon is fully submerged into that sea. And, and that's why we can't see the moon. We could only see when it crosses over the light. Say, for instance, if we're in an airplane and there was a big flashlight in the ocean, we would be able to see that light. And if something swam over that light, that would be pretty much like what the moon is doing uh, during the solar eclipse. I, I really, I know, where, I know where you come from, and I've heard, I've heard this theory as well, and it's, it's not a terrible theory, which is we're talking about the waters above and the waters below, and sort of right. like a book. Book of Enoch type situation where the moon is going through phases, but it's it's actually in a fluid situation and it slips in front of the sun and does its thing and then slips out of phase and goes on its way. That sort of thing. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, but I don't I don't actually believe that the sun is something physical, uh, but the, the moon probably might be just because, you know, we could see uh, real clear features on it. Like I was listening to the Globe, uh, the Globebusters uh, broadcast the other day, and there was a lady who kept saying it's like a mineral, you know. And it had me thinking, like, if there really is a firmament, and the moon and the sun are exactly the same size, yeah. would it be possible that the moon is an exact cutout of where the sun is now, where that light that the sun is is whatever light that's on the opposite side of the firmament or whatever that is, oh, I got you. and that moon. Is, it's like because they're both almost the same size, I guess. No, I got you. I got you. Let me let me answer the, the uh, let me answer your your moon thing here, and then we're we're eventually going to move on to another caller. But I want to explain this when you said, well, right. you know, the moon the moon's the moon's probably a real thing because you can see such such clear features on it. And I I go in and say, right. okay, go down to Neil deGrasse Tyson's planetarium, otherwise known as the Hayden Planetarium, and look and tell me what you think of the moon there. Because that moon has got some really wonderful features on it. In fact, so clear that if you took you, you if you took somebody from even a hundred years ago and brought them into that room, you and told them it's like, oh yeah, by the way, we're looking actually outside and that moon's real. He might even believe it. So just because the image is clear, I mean, think about it this way. That, well, in fact, we'll even use our technology right now, right? What if you showed somebody from thirty years ago an HD television? Remember when those things first came out? And how it was really clear and like right. pets were like whapping at the screen and, and and I mean it was super I mean to the point where news readers had to like change their makeup because it was that clear. You know, imagine imagine right. what what a technology could do that was far advanced than ours. Right, right. I'm, I'm gonna say can I say something right quick? Uh yeah, real fast. Yeah. Uh say for instance if that so called sea wasn't there or whatever it is, like the water above. 
would the whole sky look like how the moon actually looks? You know, would would it be as textured as the moon a- appears to be? So um, I don't know. Just throwing that out there. Good stuff. Um, something I, like I thought it. of. I'm yeah. not gonna. I'm not gonna judge you and say that you're a big weirdo because look, I wake up with a big <laughs> with a big bowl of flat Earth every morning, and so I have no right, right. to judge you. So, but hey, right. What? If if you end up right and and we end up wrong, then I'll buy you a drink on that day. I swear. Unless you don't drink. Hey, I'm gonna hold you to it. Okay. All right, man. You have a good rest of your night. Okay. All right, buddy. Thanks you too. All right. Let's jump in. Hey, Mark. Yeah. Real quick, uh, chiming in the moon texture. Mm-hmm. I probably don't have enough time to go into it, but uh, there could be an explanation for that. And, and that's and that was for me tracking the moon from when it you know it flips its orientation in Australia, the southern hemisphere, and and it's flipped back over in the northern hemisphere. Yeah. <clears throat> um, the moon, the surface of the moon acts a whole lot like a normal map. It positions itself according to our observation, so it's Dang not. Bad. It's not a it, it's not a solid surface by any means. It, it acts like the normal map by by the shadows are all the same size and the way it it takes light. Now I'm not saying the moon's hologram where it was created by some alien technology, you know, with a bunch of technology, but that's exactly what the moon looks like. And yeah. we're looking into it more. Yeah, and you know, and I'll, I'll real quick before we pick up this caller before we go to the break because we're running out of time in the segment, which is. That that's what we do in software. What you were saying is the moon changes based on your perspective. That's what we've been doing in software for the last fifteen years, which is it's based. It's the 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 objects that are you're looking up in the sky are phased. They're instanced based on you, based on your location. And your friend could be sitting, you know, a mile away from you, and he's gonna, you know, see a perfectly re- relative perspective in relation to you. So, yeah. I, yeah, it's kind of like the tree in the video game that always faces you. Absolutely. Oh, that dro- always drove me nuts. But, yeah, you're right. The tree. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah, we we're try, we try not to do that as much nowadays because, it's you know, it's, it's obvious a giveaway. But, yeah, it's a good one. All right, let's pick up uh, – I think this is California. Let's grab them. Uh, I think it's Eureka, California. Eureka, California, you're probably going to be the last call before this break. And then we'll do one more segment after this. <laughs> Are you there? Yes. Hi. Can you hear me? I can hear you. What's going on? How are you guys doing? I eh, can't complain. It's Tuesday. <laughs> cool. Um, we're, we're, we're talking eclipse. What, what do you got? You got something on the eclipse or you got something else? Oh, by the way, I saw I saw the eclipse in Oregon. Went up and oh, saw cool. the total eclipse. What would you think? Yeah. And, well, I when I was watching it, I remember thinking at one point that the, the thing blocking it looked oblong. And I thought, that doesn't even look like a sphere. It looks so blonde. There was one little section where I remember I remember saying that to myself. And then, so I went through various theories, you know, because I didn't see the moon approach it. I didn't see the moon leave. And I know that the moon is see-through, and you can see stars through it. Yeah. But then, of course, as soon as I got back, I thought, well, it could be Rahu. It could be a black sun. But then I came across these Photoshop pictures like you guys have been talking about. Mm-hmm. And so just took a couple of pictures, and I verified it with, some of my own pictures and I realized, yep, this checks out. There was no moon at all. So I, I sent multiple friends, uh, there's a jazz song called no moon at all. So to kind of rub it in, I I posted this on their Facebook and stuff, but, um, uh, I was wondering what if the earth was way bigger than we've been taught, like huge. Oh yeah. The, the super, the super sphere theory. Yeah. The super sphere. Like what if, what if there's photographic evidence somewhere of a huge sphere? Well, if there Just was. wonder what you guys thought about that. Uh, it's very possible, and that that has been thrown out there. And you guys can chime in if you want. We still got uh, three minutes to the break. The uh, it's that's been put out there almost since month one, which is normally I just say, look, you're 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 still holding on to the sphere idea that's been burned into your head since you were six years old. You're just trying to hold on to it. And it's like, well, what if we're on a much, much bigger sphere and this is just a really, really flat part on that sphere? Like we're living – basically our entire civilization rests on Kansas, you know, and and that the earth is is just much, much bigger. Yeah, was, of course. Of course it's possible. That uh, that uh, that uh, explanation is just grasping at heliocentrism straws. Uh, there you go. And, and And then if you do that, 
then you have to take gravity into account. So now you have this giant sphere. The gravity should be way more. And that just throws NASA's calculations of what all of the other things are doing even farther out of whack. So that got to let go, just, man. Okay. Yeah, you, you got to let go. <laughs> okay, of the I'm ball, not. Man. I, uh, let go of the ball. So hold on, hold on one one second. I'm a flat earther. I've been yeah, studying you guys. All every one of each and every one of you have watched like tons of each of your videos. Yeah. I think you're all really cool. I'm not saying it's a sphere. I'm saying it could be flat. It could be symbol shaped. But what if it was way bigger? And so the idea of this ring wall of Antarctica yeah. was there to keep us from really investigating further. Oh, sure. Sure. Why, why not? Uh, absolutely. Well, I mean, if we're talking about the infinite plane, you know, that it, oh, yeah, that if it goes out, I have no doubt that there is a huge realm outside of this place. I have very, very little doubt. Uh, but I do think that we're kind of hemmed in. That we're not going anywhere because uh, for various reasons. One, because I think we're, our civilization is far too dangerous. But yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's not. I I don't think it's just a one-off. I don't think there's just one of these either. Uh, I I love the idea that there's more than one. You know, th that there's pockets of these all over the place. Sure. I'm I'm not talking about a pocket. I'm talking about what if the thing we're on is about five to ten times bigger, and you know, and, and, what if it could be flat, thimble shaped. Is Could there sphere, water? But is there big. water on the bottom side of it? That yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I'll... It's good that you're thinking about it. Absolutely. And and again, it not going to shoot down the idea. It's uh, but and, don't go ahead, David. Go ahead. We got uh, twenty seconds. No, to I didn't say anything. Oh, sorry. Um, sorry. I was going to say, what if the answer is, what if the answer is right in front of our nose? What if the answer is just right there to be seen? I'm not going to say it because I don't want to get killed or something, but what if the answer is just right there and yet they have to protect that answer by putting the ring the wall of Antarctica? Maybe. Maybe. And with that, I hate to say this, but we're going to our last break. But thank you very much, California. All right. Thanks, guys. You guys are cool. No hate. No hype. No fear. We are DFR. Your protection from, from deception. Yeah, you know what? I I still don't. Well, the problem with me trying to sing this because uh, Peanut Gallery keeps asking me, I've got to sing. I know I promised a guy that I was going to sing a couple of verses of this. Is because now I'm using a cover of Joe Jackson stepping out from his album Night and Day. I don't know exactly which word, which verse I I come in at. Mark, so, I have to call you out on this. Why? I believe Peanut Gallery is in your head. <laughs> there is no peanut gallery there is no peanut gallery it's all in your head considering i'm a flat earther yeah you could be right I... it's an alter ego it's like a like one of those serial killer movies <laughs> why do you let him sure talk to you like right. that i don't know shut up all right <laughs> let's take some calls <laughs> thanks Tara. that was awesome okay let's uh let's pick up uh middletown new york Hey, New York. What's going on? Hey, Mark. It's Mark. Hey! How are you? Hey, are you in the hospital still? No, I'm out. I'm home finally. How long were you? Hey, uh, you didn't have any trolls, so uh, you suck, queer. <laughs> <laughs> that's your troll. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, that's the best they could come up with. <laughs> <laughs> you suck, queer. Is this Zulu one? <laughs> yes, this is Zulu. Hey, one. Dave. So Zulu has a hangout. I mean, a, a meetup, and then doesn't show up. I know. Yeah, ends up in the hospital. I know. It's. I was so mad, so freaking mad. I couldn't believe it. I was like, uh, uh, just floored, I, floored. I don't. I, I don't, don't even know if anybody went. There was six of us. There was six of us there. You went. Uh, I went. Uh, I called uh, you, Mark. You talked uh, to us. Uh, I, 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 was, I called David, you while awkward. you while you were out I, there with the film crew. I said, I'm at the meetup. Remember, you returned my call and you oh, talked to everybody right. on speakerphone. 
Right. I sorry. I was getting dehydrated uh, during that whole trip. I and and I was drinking. I was making up some drinks. Nice. I was laying on a cold slab that they run forty <laughs> degree water underneath you, and it's basically like you're lying in the middle of the street in a snowstorm, just freezing, trying to get the temperature down. That's where I was. It was fun. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. It's horrible. Horrible. Don't wish it on anybody. <laughs> So what? Uh, what can, are you just calling in? To, are you just calling in to say hi, or just give us some New York crap? Or, I, well, I I wanted to say hi, and I also wanted to apologize to everybody because I feel like a piece of crap that you know I end up in the hospital. I try setting this thing up, and and then I don't even make it. And I want to try again in September. I just have to wait till I get my EMT schedule. I have a class coming up, so I have to work that in, and then I'll try setting up another one. I, I so want to meet everyone. I just dying to meet you, David. Uh, I I love your work. I mean, I miss the eclipse and you guys, you and Mike, both your videos. It was like, I got to see it. It was great. I needed that. You know, thank, it was horrible you, sir. being there. Thanks. And I'm going to, I'm, awesome. I'm going to use uh, uh, Mike's uh, photo that he sent me with the cool bands that we were talking about earlier. I'm going to use that as the uh, thumbnail. I've changed the thumbnail on this episode like three times already, and I never do that. But I'm going to use <laughs> Mike's because he's got a cool the one with the yellow the yellow ring around it that you drew. Yeah, yeah, that's the electromagnetic field. Yeah, I'm totally going to use that. So. Yeah, it, I, I, it's just amazing. I and I'm so glad that we got so much footage and that everybody's participating and looking at this. Uh, I, I just I'm amazed. I'm amazed yeah. that. We never caught this before, these things, you know. Now we have this technology. Oh, I know. Who you know, who would have thought? I, I didn't even really pay attention to the eclipse. And then as it was drawing closer and closer, I was realizing that this could be a real opportunity for us. And then the, like, Flat Earth Oregon set up that billboard at, at the intersection of Interstate 5 and Portland Avenue down in Salem, which was perfect because there was a huge traffic jam out there. You know, there wasn't a million people that were trying right. to get into Salem, but there was a huge traffic jam, and and it was great. And all the stuff that's coming out now, yeah, it's definitely a flat Earth eclipse. And the T-shirt that I was wearing, that the peanut gallery, I know they're not real. Okay, so I ordered my own T-shirt, and it said the uh, 2017 blackout, uh, flat Earth blackout, and it's perfect. I'm sorry, flat Earth blackout 2017, which was, and people were coming up to me and asking me where they could find that shirt. Because it was like some, like some rare concert shirt or something. It's like, oh, dude, totally. <laughs> yeah, well, There's we have a couple, a, right, in existence. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Mike. Oh, well, I didn't cut in people. Uh, yeah, we, uh, it is Sorry. a flat Earth eclipse. Uh, I, Dr. Zach called me from uh, Morocco. He, he's got eclipse pictures. I got eclipse pictures from Spain. And Stan, uh, I, I believe the British Isle of White uh, from the UK, also has eclipse pictures. And uh, yeah. that, nobody said anything about the eclipse showing up over there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, heck, I watch, I, I watch the computer graphic uh, simulations on that and where the eclipse, you know, started just a little bit off the West Coast of the United States and then died somewhere uh, just outside the Bermuda Triangle. And I'm going, oh, oh, so when you, when I heard it was like, oh, yeah, they could see it in these different spots. I was going, how does that work exactly? How do you how are you pulling that off unless there was something else going yeah. on that they just, you know, they said, oh, yeah, this is the path of the eclipse. And then hopefully nobody noticed. Nobody else would look. Why would you? It's the Great American Eclipse. Why would you even look in London? Why would you look in in the Southern Hemisphere? So good points. Huh. Anyway, interesting, interesting. Yeah. So hey, I, so, I, I got a quote for all of you, including the uh, your all. Uh, all right, I've guy. got. He's got one for <laughs> you too. Go ahead. Okay, <laughs> and this and this I think applies because actually, while I was in the hospital, I was talking to all the nurses and doctors and spreading flat earth and they were like wow you you're not even like <laughs> wow you suffered insane. a head injury <laughs> <laughs> this this and, and it was funny because you know that of course the high fever in the beginning oh my but god after they're they're like no way they they were believing me they were listening they were they were or, or going they home were to talk to their spouses tests. <laughs> maybe maybe <laughs> uh so here's my quote All right, what is one it? moment can change a day I'm sorry. One moment can change a day. One day can change a life and one life can change the world. And I just think it applies to everybody. Just, Hey, you know what? I guess now is the time to talk about this stuff. Talk to people. That's you know, like, that's like the spark, positive version of that conversation. Agreed. That's like the positive version of, uh, let's see, 
the the horse was lost for lack of a nail the knight was lost for lack of a horse the you know the so on and so on and the battle was lost for that chain of events type of thing that's the that's so nice. that which, that's the reverse version of what you just said which is and that, and that was buddha nice all right peanut gallery comes buddha. back with there are no forbidden questions in science no matter too sensitive or delicate to be probed no sacred truths who said that carl sagan you know that two-faced son of a bitch is right though <laughs> we- <laughs> Yeah, you have to ask. We have to ask those questions. We can't believe the things that they're telling us. It's it doesn't make sense. I mean, it, David and Mike every day, or and Mark, you, you, the three of you are always pointing it out. You know, hey, ask questions. Look at this shit. This this doesn't fucking make sense. You yeah. know, uh, yeah. So awesome. Don't don't take things at face value. Don't. There's too many things out there no. that we take as face. So I learn new stuff. Every single day, there's little trivia things that you find out. You look at something, you think, "Oh yeah, that's the way it is." No, it is not. It is not the way it is. No, it it is it, the 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 saying is, "Things are rare." The, the the quote is, "Things are rarely what they first appear to be," and I I firmly believe that. Uh, you know, I agree. I agree. I tell anyway. my son, you have to learn something new every day. You don't have to believe what they tell you at school. You have to do the the work, but you have to ask questions. And be critical yeah. and just don't believe everything you're told, even from I'm, me. Because I'm be actually wrong. thinking of doing that, actually, at the um, uh, the conference in Raleigh. Because uh, I've, I've been working on, you know, because the, the speech thing really depends on what happens in the next few months. I've changed it like three or four times already. Right. And I only have an, like, an hour <laughs> to, to talk. And it's like, oh, what do I talk about now? Because you know, now but it's like, I, do I work the eclipse in? I, who knows? But I was thinking at one point, it's like, you know what? I, I, I end most of my videos with... Do your own research and ask questions. And I think I'm going to do what they did down at the conference in Atlanta, which is after, you know, I'm going to do like a short little thing and I'm not going to run for, I'm not, not going to talk for an hour. And then I'm just going to open the floor up and, and say, all right, grab a microphone, ask me, whatever you got. Cause I'm, there's, there's no Q&A is the best. I'm not going to be able to talk to all of you during this thing. Even if I spend, you know, hours and hours in the lobby, they're just way too much. I mean, just, heck, the meetup that I w- did with uh, D. Marble and Patricia and, and uh, Paul on the plane. I There were people, by the time I got to the parking lot, there was only 50-something people there that I still hadn't talked to by the time I got to the parking lot. Can you imagine having pushing 1,000 people? Well, uh, boy, yeah. How am I even going to manage that? It's it's going to be really, really tough. I, you know, That's I, how they yeah. did it at the, uh, at the MUFON conference I went to. They... They talked for a few minutes and then just everybody lined up and they answered as many questions yeah. as they could. Exactly. They do so that at, people. at a lot so of things people. now. Like they do that at Comic Con yeah. and Star Trek and all that, that stuff. Sense. It's it's a good it's a good way to do it. In fact, I may even give out um you know what? It just made me think about it. I'm gonna I'll give out signed Illuminati cards to anyone that asks ask a question. Nice. Yeah, nice. I'll, I'll get one of those silver pens. Nice. Inside, I want, inside. I'm gonna try to get that flat earther card from you. No, no, because I don't have that. That's one. Awesome. That one, I that's oh, not Patricia has oh, it. Yeah, yeah, Patricia's got it. She's also got the 911. Mm. You know me, I'm such an idiot. It's like I gave her the really good cards. <laughs> oh, why did <laughs> I do funny. that? That's funny. That's funny. She was like, uh, I can't wait. The conference is coming so fast. I know. Which is spell anyway. Uh, any right. shout outs or whatever before we go to somebody else? Uh, just everybody, everybody just keep up the good work, you know, keep up the fight. It, you're doing awesome, awesome stuff. You know, you, like I, I said, know. you're making people ask questions and that's the most important thing because I don't think, you know, and I think you've said it, you know, even about the, us joking about calling you the father of flat earth <laughs> and stuff that, don't there should there shouldn't be leaders. You shouldn't be following. You should be no. looking yourself. No, and I'm researching I am, yourself. I am eternally grateful. There, there's so many people doing things. In fact, they tickled me to death that yeah. uh, o- ODD, um, the guy that interviewed him, the guy from uh, NBC News, <clears throat> he he uh-huh. was catching he he was rattling around in his head so much he did a follow up on air and tried to go after tried to light up flat Earth. You know, it, and and really hit flat Earth, and it was great. It's like, yeah, that's that's because uh, ODD got in his head, and and now this guy, yeah. he, he's got to resolve it one way or the other, and it's driving him insane. Because as a journalist, he can't he can't do it. He can't go along with it. But at the same time, part of his brain wants him to. So it's fascinating. No, it's, Unless it's, you work for CNN, they can do it. I'm sorry, what? 
Yeah. Unless you're working for CNN, they, they can get by with it, but a real journalist, no. Exactly. There you go. Yeah, and CNN. I'm still waiting. I talked to them. You know, he recorded the whole thing, and we talked for 45 minutes, and he was totally legit. I vetted him out, and he's still sitting on it. Still sitting on it because he knows the repercussions, uh, and I can't wait. Yeah, can't that's wait to corporate. See. Corporate. Yeah. Corporate's not pulling the trigger. No, not yet. Yeah, there's somebody above him. There's a producer above him that uh, you can tell is like, oh yeah. no, not yet. We gotta wait for the spaceships. Yeah. Then maybe. Anyway, no, and, and you're right. You're right because like my friends that that totally say they don't believe are always talking about it. I mean, more than me. I'm like, dude, give it a rest. Jesus, yeah. what's wrong with you? You know, there's other things. Yeah, you're right. Gets in their head. All right, I'll go. Thank you for the time. I appreciate it. Thank you for everybody out there. Best it was giving me best wishes and hoping I felt better. Thank you. I appreciate oh, it, and I will and, try definitely to start another one. Okay. And by the way, ta- uh, contact Peanut Gallery because he says you haven't called him. Is that what he said? Is that, is that right? Okay. Okay. Uh, I'll do that. That's telepathically, right? Because he doesn't exist. Exactly. He doesn't. So it's my split personality saying that you should contact the peanut gallery. Re- exactly. Re- You're not making dreams. it any better, Mark. You're not <laughs> making this any better. You're reinforcing my point. Uh, I love well, it. Uh, you guys are awesome, man. All right. Thank you. Have a good night, fellas. Everybody right. be good. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So let's pick up. We got time for a couple more calls. Uh, let's pick up, and I cannot even begin to pronounce the name of this place. It's in New York, though. 914 area code? 914 area code, New York. Are you there? What area is it, Mark? 914. What's the, what's the area? Oh, it says, I can't pronounce it. It's W, it's an abbreviation for something. W S C H S T Z. Westchester. Oh, Westchester. Westchester, New York. Are you there? Yeah, Westchester, New York. I'm, you... I'm, I'm here in the live and ready to go. Bronxville, New York. <laughs> Hit us. What do you got? Oh, Chris Cannell here from Westchester. Hey. DC on uh, YouTube. Oh, right on. How are you, Mark? <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. Now, I'm going to agree with you on a couple of things here. You know, during the solar eclipse, I, I uh, of course, we all observed quite a bit here. Um, I'm going to agree with you on that the sun eclipses itself, just like the moon does on any, you know, any eclipse itself. So there's actually another body or uh, the sun is actually eclipsing itself. Okay. And? My question <laughs> to you is. Yes. The only problem with that is that I can't zoom in on a P900 on the actual craters that are eclipsing the sun because it's totally blacked out completely. Okay. And there's no way of getting any crescent from the moon going over the sun itself or the earth going over the sun itself. It's just a, it's just a blacked out. I mean, this is the most incredible thing I've ever seen in my life. Just like everybody else. I mean, you just see this crescent come over that's perfectly circle right. going over the sun itself. And I mean, you know, I, again, on, on a couple of my videos, I said the last time I was able to actually see this, I was in eighth grade. I think I believe that was in 19. Oh, God, I don't want to age myself. <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. I'm probably older than you. Are. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, no, no, you're not. No, I think I'm older than you. Um, I think it was about 19, circa 1979. That that's when they, okay. So you're, yeah, you're a little older. Um, so, I mean, it, it, it was completely cloudy. The science teacher brought us out there and he just said, Oh no, we're not going to watch this anymore because we can't go, (laughs) you know, let's go back in the class. It was all cloudy. So we couldn't actually see it. That was the only experience that I could have ever actually had with the eclipse. This is the first eclipse here in New York that you could actually really see. Mm. Um, and, um, you know, I was, I was quite stumped on this. Um, yeah. But do you, you kind of go along with, if you were listening to the show tonight, kind of go along with what Ditra and Mike were saying that, uh, it's, it's just, it's blo- it's eclipsing itself. Yes, exactly. Well, that that was because I heard your interview a couple of weeks ago, 
you know, on that radio station. And it is actually eclipsing, it's, it's actually eclipsing itself. And there's no explanation other than that, that that's the reason why you're seeing this solar eclipse. Because we live, unfortunately, on a flat plane. <laughs> and what, sucks, what do so you mean that. eclipsing itself? What it, is it just turning part of itself off? Is that what you're saying? Me? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying that that's... Yeah, be, no, that's would, what I'm saying, too. It would be the easiest way to do it. I mean, if you're talking about... I mean, we could do this now. You know, we're only talking about pixels. Yeah. Really. You know, just, just if you have a super, super bright whatever... I don't even know what name the light source they're using. But let's say it's a super LED, right? It, but it's, a, it's, it's billions of them. Or how many of you, you could fit on an, on an object that's whatever it is, or or made up, or or what Mike was saying, maybe what whatever the original projection system is. If you're, because otherwise we're going to be going in in backwards leaps. It, whatever it is is dimming itself by gradient. You know what I mean? So it can it sort of like what we can do again, what we can do in a planetarium now with the moon, they can do with the sun, whoever they may be. Yeah, exactly. And go down to Hayden Planetarium, and they can switch it on and off and do whatever they want. And that's sure. exactly what we have right here. Yeah, yeah, Sorry, I but... agree. What? Um, no, what I mean, I mean, it really. Go ahead. Sorry, we no, got a little these, bit of lag. These... No, I know, I know. This voice activated system on these phones suck. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, I, I completely agree with that, a hundred percent. I mean, it really is amazing that. But yet, what I would like to find on any other eclipse that anybody can experience, is there any way of getting that, I mean, that perfect circle? I mean, I saw it, you saw it, everybody saw it, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, during this, and you know, I mean, we haven't seen one in a hundred years here on the, on the, uh, on the North Coast and, and traveling from coast to coast, from, from the West Coast to the East Coast. I mean, you know, yeah. really, has anybody captured any crescent or any crater or anything like that? Yeah, but it was just it was just such a oh, you mean like actual evidence perfect. of the moon, like like something that hints that there was a yeah. that it was a three dimension. No, as far as I know, nobody's caught any sort of because of what you were just saying no. that the contrast oh. is is well, they'll blame it on the contrast. They'll say that it can't be done. At the same time, you're going to go down that line. How in the world did we see mm -hmm. the back the back side of the Apollo program, the the Apollo capsule? If if the contrast should have been so stark that it should have just been blackness on the other side of that capsule and let it, let, you know, you could tell it was lit up by a secondary light source. But that's a whole other thing. I, I no, you, you know what? You, you're misunderstanding me. I'm sorry, Mark. Um, what, what I was talking about is just the perfect circle right around. I mean, there, there's, there's no indentation at all with that, with that shadow. That's what I should have said. I should have said the shadow itself. I mean, there's, there's actually, there's no bumps or, or bruises on yeah, I mean, it's just so perfect, and that's why I believe, and I agree with you on that, that is actually the sun is eclipsing itself because there's no other way of it happening. Hmm. Um, the sun actually eclipses itself, and the moon eclipses itself, and, and the moon and the lunar eclipses are, are very often. I mean, they, they happen, what, two or three times a month. Sure. Um, I mean, here we are dealt with a situation. The last one was, was 1919. I mean, we had one in 1979, but it was obscured by the clouds. And it's never, never often from coast to coast. Uh, yeah. But, you know, I mean, actually seeing such a perfect circle just completely obscure yep. the sun. Can, with, I, can with, I address this, no Mark? Bumps. Go, go ahead, Mike. Go ahead. Shoot. Hey, New York. How you doing? Uh, first of all, thank you for watching with us. And you're right. It is a perfect circle. You don't, the moon's not hanging her craters out, so to speak, for us to see. And uh, what, another thing I don't think people realize is what you're seeing is a pure absence of any light. It, that is as black as anybody's going to see. And I sent Mark a photo of this. Yeah. And uh, I want you to think about it. And I'm going to give another explanation here because the moon was supposed to be there because we track the sun. We track the moon. Uh, the Sun and Moon group tracks it. David Marsh tracks it. And I'm going to give you, you guys another yeah. scenario. Okay. Uh, and first of all, I, I wish I could like shoot my brain frequencies to you and give you a link to look up. But uh, search for Ferrocell. It's F E R R O C E L L on YouTube. Uh, uh, Ferrocell electromagnetic. Search that out because it this thing whole thing looks just like somebody's taking a lighted Ferrocell, 
over a very powerful magnet. Uh, kind of think about what happens if you took a big, strong magnet to one of those old television, those tube TVs, and you stuck it right in the center there. All the light, you're, you're going to bend that light, and it's going to create a big black circle in the middle of that screen. And what we have, what we're thinking, if the moon was there, and the moon is a dielectric uh, negative magnetic light, and the sun is a positively charged magnetic light, then we're going to have a frequency cancellation at those points. And that is something else we're looking at right now. And once again, we're just throwing ideas out there. We're all making observations, and we're all saying, hey, it's nothing like they told us when we were in school. Oh, absolutely. And, and everything that from we learned in school is complete nonsense, obviously. Um, and I agree with that 100 percent. But I mean, I just I, you know, I'm, I'm and then and then uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to Mark right now. That's OK. Geocentric Earth. Make it make it make it somewhat quick. We're running out of show. I know, I know, I know, I know. We only have like 15 more seconds. OK. okay. Uh, I told my wife. Um, that the uh, how can how can water bend? Yeah, and she said it was absolutely crazy. Oh, I mean, there, there I am with that. Okay. <laughs> well, at least you put it out there. Yeah, no, oh, I'm, I'm putting a lot out there. That's what I have to do. That's my thing. Gotcha. But right, I mean, ben, how any... can how can water bend? Oh, All right. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, how can water bend? You're right. It can fill a container, it and it, it can't. It, and it can't. I mean, it can have water tension on the surface in small doses, but it to its level. That's how it is. Yep. Yep. Any okay. uh, any shout outs before we send you out? Because I got to close these guys out and uh, let them pitch whatever. Okay. I'm glad Zula one's all right. Everything's good with him. Uh, I lost contact with him for a couple of days there. And uh, Mark, uh, you know, you're doing a great job. And uh, thanks. You know, log on to my YouTube channel, CC. You know, whatever. Check. Right it. on. Just a I will. Blog. Okay, Mark. Keep keep All the right. faith Excellent. and uh, and stay flat, brother. All right, my friend. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. See you, Ben. Have a good night. Bye bye. All right, that is going to be. I hate to say that to the rest of the people that are lined up, but that is going to be the last call of the night. So we're going to do some shameless plugs for our guests. One is going to be D-I-T-R-H. His YouTube channel is also called D-I-T-R-H, otherwise known as Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole. Go. What else you got to pitch? Check me out and us uh, and Curious J on the Flat Earth Podcast. We got Facebook. We have a YouTube page, um, and you could get it on any podcast player. All the links are on theflatearthpodcast.com. Um, leave us a speak pipe message there. It's kind of a voicemail for the web and uh, we'll play it on the, sh on the show. Um, and, uh, on the bottom of that page on the flat earth podcast.com, there's a link to the billboard. You can see what we're going to be doing down in North Carolina. If you want to be a part of it, uh, and a little donation is always nice to help pay for it. Or, you know, if you, if you can't do that and you want to just be part of the, um, media blitz, feel free to just. Keep tuned into the Flat Earth Podcast. Right on. And Mike Helmick, otherwise known as Mike Helmick from his YouTube channel, H-E-L-M-I-C-K. Any other sites you want to go to or just point them at your YouTube thing? Yeah, yeah. just go to my YouTube channel. If you go to my channel, I am the Christian Flat Earther. So you're going to get 66 books only. Uh, Jesus is Lord of my life. He's Lord over everything. And all a lot of my observations will be backed with Scripture. So if that is your thing... Uh, head to my channel and uh, I know uh, appreciate you guys supporting us supporting Mark Dit uh, Dit and myself and thank you for listening to Truth Frequency Radio right on we'll see you next week same flat time same flat channel stand for uh, one sec guys Evie what is this what is this is, the, is that a model of the flat geocentric earth? <laughs> I had to make a new one. What are you doing? <laughs>